Up next, we'll be talking about the beautiful story of the uh, development of the esophagus, uh, which is a careful story that you must know if you want to completely understand the concept of tracheoesophageal fistula. Okay, you should know about, uh, you should have good knowledge of the development of the esophagus, school, because if there's any anomalies of the development of the esophagus, that's what leads to the tracheoesophageal fistula. So our focus today is to the, uh, discuss the development of the esophagus. And it's quite simple, just a straightforward lecture. Okay. So this is it. All right. And this is another picture, which I feel like this one is, um, I'll be using the two pictures though. Right. So, uh, the esophagus develops from the foregut, okay, immediately below the primordial pharynx and above the stoma, right? So this is the esophagus in, in, in yellow, okay, and it's developing from the foregut tube, okay? And this one in green up here is the pharynx, so the esophagus is below the pharynx, okay, but it's above the stomach. Right, so moving forward now. We said that the respiratory diverticulum appears on its ventral wall or, or, or at the front or at the anterior wall, okay? So this is a respiratory diverticulum or you could call it uh, the laryngotracheal diverticulum or the laryngotracheal tube, okay? Anyone you want to call it. So this laryngotracheal tube or the respiratory diverticulum appears in front of the esophagus, okay? So the esophagotracheal septum gradually partitions this respiratory diverticulum from the dosal part of the foregut. Okay, so basically just trying to say that in as much as the respiratory diverticulum appears in front of it, there's separation. Okay, there's separation between the two structures. So thereafter, the foregut is divided into a ventral respiratory primordium and a dosal esophagus okay so a ventral that's at the front there's a respiratory primordium that is destined to form the trachea is destined to form the larynx and is destined to form the what long boards okay but those are that's posterior at the back of this you have the esophagus developing all right so this is just the story see this is a respiratory diverticulum which is destined uh, the caudal part is forming the long boards, the middle part is forming the trachea, and the upside is forming the larynx, okay? So at the back of this, you have the esophagus growing, okay? So now, the striated muscles of the upper to third of the esophagus is derived from the mesoderm of the caudal pharyngeal arches. When we're talking about physiology of the esophagus, we say that the striated to third of the esophagus is voluntarily controllable, okay? But the smooth muscles in the lower one third of the esophagus cannot be controlled, okay? They can't be controlled by you, okay? But by just the higher centers. So the smooth muscles of the lower one third of the esophagus is from the splanchnic, also known as the visceral layer of the lateral plate mesoderm, okay? Now, obliteration of the lumen and subsequent recanalization, okay, by the end of the embryonic period, okay? So now, okay, this is recanalization. I think this is out, okay? So now at first, at first, I think at first the esophagus is short, but later it lengthens with the descent of the diaphragm, okay? So as you know, the diaphragm is up during the embryonic stages, but as it descends and grows, the esophagus becomes bigger, and longer, right? So guys, this is a, a complex development story of the esophagus. And um, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. It was quite a simple one. And to all my students, this would just be like a walk over to you guys because we have spoken times without number on the laryngotracheal tube, laryngotracheal diverticulum, respiratory diverticulum, and the rest. Okay? So see you guys in the next one and bye for now.